As I reflected on what I would say this morning, I was reminded of the occasion on which Jesus traveled from Galilee to Jerusalem. Crowds of people followed his every move, requiring of him to heal the sick. But he also used the opportunity to teach important lessons about harmony between men and women. To teach important lessons about compassion, about forgiveness, and how we should treat with everyone, especially children, or those who are like children. As he traveled, and I am now going to refer, I'm not taking away Sister Dorit's um, job this morning, but as Jesus traveled, Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 and 14, highlighted. Chapter 13 said, some people brought their children to Jesus so that he could place his hands on them and pray for them. His disciples told the people to stop bothering him. But in, in verse 14, that was verse 13, in verse 14, but Jesus said, let the children come to me and don't try to stop them. People who are like these children belong to God's kingdom. In those two lines of scripture, Jesus made it very clear that all of us, no matter our station in life, are important. And just as he is interested to see and hear from all of us, we, his followers, should be open and show special care to those who are vulnerable, such as children. And so, this morning, open your hearts. Each year across the world, 16 million vulnerable girls between the ages of 15 and 19 give birth to babies who become equally, if not more vulnerable. The estimated 16 million births by teenagers represent a global adolescent birth rate of 44 per 1,000 girls. In Jamaica, the adolescent birth rate has been falling from a high of 129 per 1,000 girls in 1985 to 60 per 1,000 girls in 2015, and we must applaud ourselves. The fall has been dramatic, and we can credit this success in part to the work of the dedicated women and men of the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation over the last 40 years. The center was established in 1978 in response to the high rate of adolescent pregnancy in Jamaica. At that time, 31%, or nearly three out of every 10 live births were to adolescent mothers, someone younger than 18 years old. We all know that when a girl becomes pregnant, her life changes in significant ways, and rarely, if ever, for the better. Lots of pressure. 40 years ago, teenage pregnancy meant to many, many young Jamaican girls a dead end. It was a guarantee of a future of misery, a life of poverty, exclusion, and dependence. The pregnant teenager's education would come to an end and her job prospects would disappear. That was before the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation. But over the last 40 years, the center has been removing the major obstacles that would try to stop adolescent mothers from leading successful lives. The work of the center, and I will list about four of the activities of the center. 
helping them to continue their education, thereby increasing their job prospects, and equipping them with the tools to look after their children and to become good parents. Today, a past student of the Women's Center's program, Paula Pinnock, can honestly say, and I quote her, to any pregnant teenage girl out there who might be thinking it is the end of the world, it's not. If you think that there is no one that you can talk to, come to the Women's Center. You are special. The Women's Center program for teenage mothers began with six, just six clients and one center located at 42 Trafalgar Road. In 40 years, the program has served more than 46,000 adolescent mothers and has expanded to include seven main centers and 11 outreach stations island-wide. Please applaud them. The majority of the 46,000 girls have completed their secondary education. Several of our past students, of whom we are very, very proud, are with us this morning. And I don't know, past students, if you mind, you could just stand and be acknowledged. Past students. We are very proud of you. Many of our teenage mothers have pursued tertiary level education and are engaged in just about every profession that you can think of, making significant contributions to our country. And so, as I looked at Mrs. Robinson, she is the acting executive director of the Bureau of Gender Affairs. We give thanks that our Lord has taught us to have compassion and to show special care to the vulnerable. Today, these women who were once so vulnerable are empowered and are building successful lives for themselves and for their children and for Jamaica. Best-selling author Malcolm Gladwell wrote, and I quote, no one, not rock stars, not professional athletes, not software billionaires, and not even geniuses ever make it alone. To that I would add, we need a community to help us to navigate the world and to fulfill our destinies. Ladies and gentlemen, our girls in the Women's Center program and their children are succeeding because they have been given the right support. Over the years, our support of pregnant teenagers has been misunderstood. Let me be clear, giving tender loving care to a pregnant teenager is not an endorsement of teenage pregnancy. Neither is it encouragement for teenagers to have children. In fact, the majority of adolescent mothers who enter this Women's Center's program delay having a second pregnancy until much later in their lives. Our records show that less than 2% of the girls who enter our adolescent mother's program have a second pregnancy during their adolescence. I repeat, less than 2%. With such an impressive rate of success, the Women's Center has been recognized worldwide as an international best practice. The United Nations Population Fund in its 2013 State of the World Population Report praised the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation as a great example of Jamaica offering to the world a model for preventing adolescent pregnancy and supporting young mothers. Indeed, several states from across the Caribbean as well as Asia and Africa, have sent delegations to Jamaica to conduct study tours of the Women's Center with a view to replicating our program in their respective countries. 
To date, the program has been successfully replicated in Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, Guyana, and Kenya. So we have set the bar, and we have provided them with the model. But despite the successes, women who become pregnant as teenagers continue to face a lingering challenge, and that is a stigma. Whatever the circumstances of a teenage pregnancy, a formidable combination of relatives, institutions such as schools and the church, social and cultural norms usually conspire, wittingly or otherwise, to blame the girl and block her path. We all know that. But that should change. The same State of the World Population Report, which praised Jamaica for establishing the Women's Center, also featured the personal testimony of a young woman from Jamaica named Tonnet, who got pregnant at the age of 15. Tonnet was 31 at the time she gave this comment, and I quote her, even after all your accomplishments, all the stuff you have gone through to pass these hurdles, to become a better person, people can be very unforgiving because they are going to remember, oh, she had a baby when she was 15. She got pregnant as a picnic. So we need to embrace those who have made an effort to better their lives and forgive them. The government can establish the Women's Center to enable pregnant teenagers to continue their education. Unfortunately, we cannot establish an agency to eliminate the stigma that surrounds these teenage pregnancy. So it is left up to you as individuals to eliminate the stigma. Supporting or perpetuating a stigma is a personal choice. We can choose to turn away a pregnant teenager or a woman who had a baby during her adolescence and say, don't bother us, as the disciples did. Or we can choose to respond as Jesus did by opening our arms and showing compassion and care. All of us must choose. Which will you choose? Compassion? As I close, please allow me to express thanks to each person who has contributed to the work of the Women's Center over these 40 years. Your work has helped to improve and build lives. More than 90,000 lives. This is something to celebrate. I'm going to ask all the staff members, the board, and everyone to just stand and for you all to applaud them for their work present and former members of the center. We thank you very much for your work. Thank you so much.